It's November 29, 2008. It's Maximize Utility. And today I want to start a series on the history of the Fed. And this, I think, is a really, really timely thing to know because maybe you haven't noticed, but in the last year, the U.S. Fed has engaged in a truly historic mode of economic policy. We are doing hundreds of billions, that's hundreds of billions of dollars of what we call discount lending. That's lending directly to banks and other financial institutions. Now, literally, a year and a half ago, we were doing almost none of this kind of lending. And for the last 30 years, we were doing it to a very, very small extent. The amount of discount lending that might have been done in a week or in a month would have been in the tens of millions, maybe hundreds of millions in an odd month. This is a truly historic development. And what I want to do is go through the history of the Fed and see what we can learn. And I contend that my uh, analysis will be very valuable because I don't have any axe to grind. I'm not attacking the Fed like someone like Ron Paul is doing, nor am I a deep believer in the rightness of the Fed and the ability to move the economy. I want to go through and try to objectively look at decade by decade what the Fed was doing and seeing if it can do the right things, if we can discern what to do, or if we're just doing some kind of foolish policy, borrowing a trillion dollars and foisting that on our grandchildren. So before we get started, you have to understand what does the Fed generally do? If you look at a textbook, they usually talk about three things. One of them I want to eliminate right off the bat, changing the reserve requirement. That's something we did maybe in the 1930s. We don't generally do it today. It's not a policy tool we use today. China uses it to some extent. But what we've always done, say, in the last half of the 20th century, is open market operations. These are the buying and selling of bonds held by banks so that we can control the rate at which banks lend to each other. We call it the Fed funds rate. And then if we can control that, we can manipulate credit. We can control car loan rates and mortgage rates, supposedly. That's what we've been doing. That's what Alan Greenspan was famous for doing. And if I were teaching launch economics, say, a year or a year and a half ago, certainly, that's all I would have talked about. The other thing, the third tool, is lending directly to banks. Sometimes you call it discount lending, or you might call it lender of last resort lending. And this is what we're doing in a really big way. Now, a year and a half ago, I would hardly have mentioned this in my monetary course because we hadn't been doing it. But now we're doing it to the tunes of hundreds of billions of dollars. This is what we want to see if there's any precedent in history about. Just a little more orientation before we get started. First of all, I'm no Fed hater. I'm not like politician Ron Paul who cavalierly says, oh, let's get rid of the Fed and put in a gold standard. I think we need a central bank, and I think we need it for troubleshooting purposes from time to time. Maybe now, maybe not as much as we're doing it, perhaps. Here's a book by a guy named Robert Auerbach. He's found Deception at the Fed. But it's all nitpicking stuff. I do think that the people who ran the Fed throughout its history, including Greenspan and Volcker and even uh, vilified out the Burns, I think they've done their darndest to steer the economy. I just think they've been overwhelmed by economic circumstances. And I'm also not a pious insider. Here's a book by a guy named Ethan Harris. He's a top Wall Street macroeconomist, one of those so-called Fed watches. That's his job to try to discern the movements of the Fed. I think it's a phony job. But he's a great economist. He has experience at the Fed. And he's well respected and he speaks all the time and he gets quoted in the press. But if you read his book and maybe later on we'll review his book, you find he's very, as I say, pious. He believes the models and he believes the role of the Fed to shape the economy. And I think he's seeing things that aren't really there. Uh, furthermore, I'm not like the uh, textbook writers. In my monetary economics course, I use a textbook. Here's the cover of it, written by a guy named Stephen Shishetti. Stephen Shishetti is a top scholar. I consider him a notch below Ben Bernanke. And this book goes through the usual tools of Fed policy. And he's a deep believer that the economy doesn't rectify itself and the Fed has to save the economy. In particular, he cites that in the 1800s, the U.S. economy was very volatile. We had panic after panic after panic. In other countries, in countries in Europe, they had a central bank and their economy is more stable. I think that's a totally preposterous idea. I don't think that our economy was unprosperous during the 1800s, and I think the fluctuations in lending were actually good for the economy. But as I say, I don't buy into the strong role of the central bank without proof. And that's what we want to do. We want to look you know, roughly decade by decade at the history of our central bank. And we want to try to find clues about the effectiveness of policy which tool of policy was being used, and we want to ask whether that policy was counter-cyclical or not. Generally, it should be counter-cyclical. Oftentimes, we're going to find the Fed policy was pro-cyclical. And then we want to ask whether or not private parties ignore or offset policy initiatives. That might be the problem we're facing today. We call it moral hazard. You go out there and say, uh, hey, B.S. Jones was taken over by the Fed. I'm Lehman Brothers. Let's wait around for them to take us over. And then I think the key thing is we want to see, was policy swamped by outside economic factors? And that, I think, is a really key thing. I think that when the economy is really strong, 
you can do Fed policy as long as you don't do it really poorly, and it will seem like it will work. When the cards are stacked against you, it's going to be really, really tough. So anyway, let's go and look decade by decade at what the Fed has done.